Sir Arthur Conan Doyle confronts his fictional creation Sherlock Holmes now on two, as a challenging encounter for the author presents revelations of betrayal and mistrust. My name is Arthur Conan Doyle. Title, sir. Indeed. Ed, Ed. Thank you. Madame Moshell awaits you. She knew of your coming. Well, no great prescience in that. My telephone made an appointment. Ah. Ah. Named after the King of England, no doubt. No doubt. Hat and coat, sir. No, thank you. I should retain them since I... I may not stay long. You'll find Madame Moshell to be an extraordinary sensitive. Her clairvoyance is astounding. You will stay, I can promise you that. And to Sir Arthur. Your fate attends you. Mr. Doyle, please be seated. Thank you. Or well, should I address you as Sir Arthur? No, no, no. Had quite enough of that. Uh, Mr. Doyle is fine, thank you. Madame Michelle, I presume. Yes. You seem fretful, Mr. Doyle. That manservant of yours overplays the role a little, wouldn't you say? He has been with me a long time. My dog's been with me a long time, and he knows his place. A man is not a dog. Really? The suffragettes might give you an argument on that point. Madame Michelle, I don't wish to appear rude, but shall we get to business? I have an appointment for supper. You wrote to me. To beg you to come here, because... two weeks ago, in the middle of a seance, I was possessed. It was almost demonic. Never before have I experienced such a strong manifestation, such a powerful mind. It has happened three times since, each time stronger. Each time the spirit has said but two words, Conan Doyle, Conan Doyle. Madam, I have to tell you, I've done some checking up in our circles. No one appears to have heard of you. I do not advertise my gifts, Mr. Doyle. Indeed, sometimes I wish that I did not possess them. What is it? Maybe. I can't breathe. Please, stay. I know. I know that you believe in the world of spirits. Yes, implicitly, but... Then please, believe. Believe in me. With me. Conan Doyle. Conan 
Doyle. What's the matter, my dear fellow? Don't you recognize an old friend when you see one? Good God, not possible. Why not? Not possible, non-existent. How pedestrian, my dear Doyle. Surely a man of your creative powers can do better than that. I have no need. You do not exist. You are a fiction, a fiction of my mind. Ah, but thought is material, is it not? Imagine a million, two million minds with but one single thought, one single belief. The existence of Sherlock Holmes at your service. Thought made substance. The world of spirits, Doyle, world to which you now dedicate your life, forsaking all others, all things are possible. My existence is as real as your own. An utter tripe. Please grasp this remark with your cerebral tentacle. The doll and its maker are never identical. But he the created, the puppet of fiction, would not brook rivals or stand contradiction. Ah, well, every doggerel must have his day. Excellent. You begin to join the game. There is no game. You, sir, are not real. Then catechize me. Catechize me, man. Prove me false. I let the light do that. Afraid of the dark, Doyle? Afraid of what you might discover? Bad habit of yours, that, turning your back on people. Bit cowardly, surely. I turn my back on no one. Then include me in this magnanimous universe of yours. Catechize me, Doyle. Prove me false. Or is your blood too thin? My blood's thick enough. Fee, fi, fo, far. My smoke out, Doyle, and away he runs. Don't be ridiculous. Then accept the challenge, Doyle. Throw away the white feather and pick up the gauntlet. Prove me false, I dare you. I shan't irrefutably. You're a sham, a faker, a charlatan. Prove it. I have with pleasure. Excellent. The game's afoot. My intellect against yours. Not much of a contest, I admit, but have at you! Oh. Ah! One regrets causing pain to a beautiful woman, but it was a long journey and she resisted. Don't blame her. Shall we proceed? Banish me to the outer regions, if you can. Banish you? I'll make mince pies out of you. Who wore the speckled band? No one. It was a poisonous snake. Scald him blood at Lauriston Garden. Racha! The German for revenge. Which stories did your brother Mycroft appear in? The Greek interpreter, the Bruce Partington plans, the final problem. Aha! Your first attempt to murder me. It is as if you met a tram car coming down a country lane. Again, Mycroft Holmes. Could apply to you, though, Doyle. Rubbish, rubbish. Who said, though he might be more humble, there's no police like Holmes? E.W. Horner. Your own brother-in-law, of course. In which tale did I say? I spent my life in one long effort to escape the commonplace of existence. Uh, the Red-Headed League? The old story. A treacherous friend and a fickle wife? <laughs> From the tale of the retired Cullerman, one of the last stories you wrote for me, Doyle, oh, you've glad... forgotten. I was glad to get shot of you. But you haven't, have you? Touché? All right, all right. If I was assured of your distraction, I would, in the interest of the public, cheerfully accept my own. Myself to Moriarty, the arch-villain. The man you created to kill me. Very well. Very well. If you are Holmes, where is Watson? He, he I'm afraid, is on another case. Fallen on your own sword, eh? Holmes would never be without his Watson. Well, you may play him for me if you wish. But no, 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 no. I had forgotten. You have quite another role to fulfill. Murder victim? Shall I lie with my throat cut on a Persian carpet? Nearer the truth than you realize, Doyle. The reason I have summoned you here is because I'm conducting a murder investigation. Murder in the world of spirit? Oh, yes. Up there is an illogical world of chaos, ghosts, phantoms, shades and shadows of the dead. Anathema to the rational mind. That of the fog, the mists, has emerged a case. I have called it the case of the three betrayals. Ooh. Out of St. Peter, are you? Well, what's my part in all this? You? You stand accused, Doyle. You were in the dock. Not as the victim, but the perpetrator of the crime. The crime of murder. I shall let your accusers speak for themselves. Search your conscience and your soul, Conan Doyle. The charge is murder by neglect and betrayal. The first accuser, a primal tale. The son betrays the father. Death. Arthur? Arthur? Are you there? Are you there, my son? I... I am here. Who are you? Why did you leave me in that asylum? That prison? Locked. Locked like a dog. Why did you put me there? Your own flesh. I did not put you anywhere. 
No. Your mother. But later. Later. It was lonely. So lonely it was. Have you still got those drawings I gave you? Those fairy drawings? They were good, weren't they? Very good. Yes, they were. What a gift it is <laughs> to have so strange a cast of mind. Yes. You get that from me. I thank you for the inheritance. Strange. The secret, dark imaginings which caused my wretched confinement made you a wealthy man. And you've used me, stolen from me. No. You left me to rot. I rotted like a piece of seaweed. Please, Father, please, calm yourself. Only my faith sustained me. My Catholic faith. You turned the back on it, didn't you? Indeed, I did. And shouldn't have done that, my boy. You should have taken me away, Uncle. All your wealth, all your money. You should have taken me home. It was not possible. You were beyond us. You stole from my imagination. You wrote your stories in my blood. You have betrayed me! It was not possible. Think on the horror rotting inside. Oh, think of Lonely here. Come and get me, Arthur. Take me away from Lonely. Oh, so lonely. Arthur Conan Doyle. The charge is murder through neglect and betrayal. How do you plead? Not guilty. I did everything I could. Oh, my father. That poor, tormented soul. So, into the asylum with him? No, it was nothing like that. And what was it like, Doyle? Well, my father has a... had an artistic, sensitive nature. But he was also, unfortunately, weak. Too weak for the demands of this harsh world. My, my mother was the strength she raised us. Mary Foley? Yes. I made a name. We would sit at the table. She would tell me tales of the knights of King Arthur. Chivalry, gallantry, high ideals. Perfect childhood. Not really. Large family, never any money. We moved from place to place, each time downwards. And your alcoholic eventually. Not his fault, I suppose. Perhaps he could not live up to your mother's high ideals. Hey, you were not saying one word. Not one word against her. She worked so hard. So hard for all of us. But you were her favorite, I presume? Possibly, possibly. When I was nine years of age, she arranged for me to be sent away, far away, to college, Stonyhurst, to the tender mercy of the Jesuits. Once a Jesuit, always a Jesuit, they say. Yeah, well, they say wrongly. So, you were sent away. Did you feel betrayed? Yes, no, well, well. At first, I realized later it was to keep me safe from him. Bad as that, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh. He could move from gentleness to a, a religious, homicidal insanity. Really, how strange. So it is your contention that while you were away, your mother, as it were, popped him in. She had no alternative. How did he die? Epileptic fit. All at this time. 
I like one of your more macabre tales. And later years, you never thought to get him out of there, out of the madhouse? I made his life as comfortable as I could. He was beyond us. It was too late. What year did he die, by the way? 1893. Oh, how interesting, my dear Doyle. Because also in 1893 was your first attempt to get rid of me. The final problem at the Reichenbach Falls. Sherlock Holmes plunges to his supposed doom. What were you trying to do that year? Kill two birds with one stone? Be careful, Holmes. Oh, I shall. I shall. Art in the blood takes such strange forms, does it not? The impulse to destroy, to create, both ends of the same piece of string. What are you trying to hide, Doyle? What dark, destructive forces are at work within you? One of the moments is an overwhelming desire to punch you on the nose. <laughs> did you love your father? Yes. As much as you did your mother? Oh, please, let's not take kindergarten forward, shall we? You stole from him. You let him rot your own father. You killed him. Not true. I find the charge of murder in the case of the first betrayal proved. Guilty. Go to hell. I call my next witness. A woman dies a long, slow death. The stuff of nightmares, Doyle. The stuff of nightmares. The story. Is it one of your own? No. No. I'll bring you. Who's there? I am. Is it you? Is it? Oh, my dear, my dear Arthur. Who are you? Do you not regret Has it been so long, so long since we talked? Since we met? Where? Where did we meet? My brother. You were his doctor. In a room upstairs from your surgery, I nursed him till he died. Afterwards, you asked for my hand. God help me. Tui, is it you? I left that name you gave me. Too much nicer than Louise. Louise Hawkins. Such a plain name for a plain wife. You were never plain. You were gentle, quiet. Like a mouse. A sweet little mouse king, sir. Oh, Arthur. Oh, forgive me, Arthur. I didn't want to come. He made me homes. His questions to tell. I didn't want to tell. Tell oh, what? Mr. Holmes. He frightened me. His eyes burn. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of Sherlock Holmes. How could I be? Tell me. Tell the bear, or he'll growl at you. Great big grizzly bear. Remember when you dressed up as a green dragon at Christmas and terrified the children? They ran and hid, remember? Oh, memory can cause such pain. He made me remember. Remember what? Tell me. But during all the years, all the years of our marriage, you never loved me. Oh, but I did. Not love. Duty. Affection. But not love. I... I... I cared for it. For a little mouse? You loved your work. Your writing. But not me. Well... I needed to create. A curtain between us. A locked door, a tray of food. That's all the children saw of you? Not at all. The dragon, Christmas. That terrified them. Oh. I didn't know. Not after a while, not being your love. But sometimes it hurt. Inside, always. And then I became ill inside. Raging consumption, the doctors called it. Do we? And you looked after me with such wonderful compassion as if I were a sick animal. the 
dia sedih karena saya yang tidak sama Elsa. When you looked at me, I saw her reflection in your eyes. Your mind, your heart were with her. I knew. Oh, well, I, I cannot deny I, I met someone, but I conducted myself with honor. There was no... Consummation. No matter how devoutly wished. It was not wished. You were waiting for me to die, to be happy with her. That is not true. You once wrote, of all ghosts, the worst are those of old love. Game. The threads of love, they bind us from beyond the grave. You made her remember. You caused her pain. That was a despicable act. In order to investigate, Doyle. Investigate? The second betrayal. Ah. One must be prepared to sting the memory a little. Any pain I may have caused her is but a pinprick compared to what she had suffered already. To a woman who had died of sorrow. She died of tuberculosis. Indeed she did. Indeed she did. Did you diagnose the illness yourself? No. A colleague. And before that time, did you not notice any signs? Any symptoms? There were small signs, but... Difficult to recognize from behind a locked door. I warn you, Holmes, you go too far. Excellent. Excellent. Now, is this honest anger? Or is it Madame Guilt in yet one more disguise? Let us look into this, shall we? Yes, by all means. I have nothing to hide. Okay. No fig leaf for your shame. No Adam, you. Sir, let us begin. Tell me, who was the other woman? No other woman. Don't tell me she was a figment of your imagination. No, but she was not another woman. Tui. I've been home for about four years when I met her, Jean. Jean Lecky. Now my wife, Jean Conan Doyle. And? Was it love at first sight? Yes, yes, something like that. Like a log falling on me. Indeed. She was everything you wished for. Yes. Yes, everything. Excellent horsewoman, love music, fine singer. I even took up the banjo to join in, you know. How harmonious. And from that moment, the moment you met Jean Lecky, you turned your face away from a sick woman. Anything but. Your deduction is pathetic, is it? Pathetic. The doctors are given to me only a few months to live. I took her to all the best places, spas, high up where the air was good for her. She lived for another 12 years. I truly did care for her. Oh, sure. So by my reckoning, for eight years, all that time, you cared for one woman while your heart was totally engaged to another. Yes? Yes, that was about the way of it. So your duty lay on a sickbed, but your physical needs galloped off on a horse. Not at all. Oh, surely. I myself know nothing of these matters, but love has its meeting points, surely. Not at all. Jean and I both agreed that the only honorable course open to us was was that of abstinence. Abstinence? Nothing. Not even a kiss. Until your wife died. Abstinence. <laughs> Jesuitical solution. Certainly more than 7%. Did your mother know this platonic pilgrimage? She did. She approved. Eight years? Good Lord. You must have built up a head of steam. Don't be so damn vulgar. 
Last thing on my mind, Doyle. It does strain the credulity somewhat. I mean, you're a passionate man. You're passionately in love with a woman for all these years, and yet you tiptoed round temptation. You really expect me to believe that? You must believe it. You will believe it. I created you, and I order you to believe it because it is true. Oh, my word. We're becoming very proprietorial all of a sudden. Very well. I shall grant you your belief. There. Is that better? But during all that time, when you look down at that poor sick woman, can you deny that somewhere in your heart, somewhere so deep, you were wanting, waiting for her to die? I can deny it, but do you? I do deny it. And her, lying there, looking up at you, her soul sick with jealousy, soul jealousy. You used that idea, did you not? One of the stories from my casebook, Fall Bridge, yes. A wife commits suicide to revenge herself on the young woman with whom her husband is in love. That is the story. Did she commit a kind of suicide, Dor? But if she did, she took a long time about it. Good God, and how callous. Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, so mean... all of this, all of this, is because you did not love her. Is that not so? I loved her as best I could. A qualified answer, Doyle. And qualification is a sure sign of guilt. Leave guilt to the Jesuit, shall we? No. Leave it to the judge, and I judge you. On the second count, guilty. You judge me! She was pale in life, a pale shadow in death. Your father the same. Both died of neglect and betrayal. Yours was the hand that betrayed them. Well, let's get on with it then. What? Let's get on with it. Three betrayals, you said. Three poor ghosts whose simple truth you will bend and twist into lies and accusations. Bring forth the third. Let's get it over with. Oh, I shall. He stands before you. You? I. You're a lunatic. The whole world without them. Yes, the third betrayal. Mine by you. It is public knowledge that in 1893 you tried to kill me at the Reichenbach Falls. And when the public hounded you. Oh, no. No, my publishers hounded me. Men and women in the streets wore black armbands. Such was the nation's grief at my death. Outcry. Questions in the house. So. You were forced into a grudging resurrection. Drudge, more than grudge. Yet in that story, the final problem, you failed to catalogue the finding of the body. Why, I wonder? Mere oversight. Oh, perhaps, like many another murderer, you could not bear to gaze upon the body of your victim. I brought you back. What more do you want? Oh, with a vengeance. From then on, I could feel, feel your resentment all through the later stories. Little digs, petty revenges. Well, name one. 1902. You accepted a knighthood from His Majesty's government, Sir Arthur. In that same year, you read the tale of the three Garadubs, in which Sherlock Holmes is offered a knighthood but refuses. Hypocrite! Why deny me what you embraced with such enthusiasm? Oh, I didn't want to take it, but my mother was afraid the king would be offended. Oh, so I had to take responsibility for rejecting what you did not have the gumption to refuse. Oh, you solved your cases, knighthood or not. And then in one of the later stories, you put me to the degradation of becoming a... Beekeeper in Sussex! <laughs> you can learn a lot from bees. What am I to do with bees? I am St. George. I am Lancelot. Galahad. I am Sherlock Holmes. I am England. Well, don't let the Scots hear you. I am your son. Now, why? Why do you deny me? You'll never write another story of Holmes, will you? No, never. Why not? Because if I did not kill Holmes, he would have killed me. So the creation outstrips the creator, and your jealousy cannot abide that. Not jealousy, I'd have put it. You take my mind from better things. I am your child. Do you deny me? It must be so. And the cock crew thrice, guilty of the third. But when you betrayed me, Dor, you betrayed yourself. But higher, more worthy, more uplifting, a world to which you have now devoted your life and believe in totally. The field of spiritualism, where luminous beings float together gently in the ether, where there's no sexuality in the grosser sense, and where tinkling fairy voices in the night tell us that harmony and selfless love prevails, the world of spirits. <laughs> oh, Doyle, 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 you're a gullible fool. What? 
You renounced the Catholic Church. Yes, when I was 22. Why? Turned your back again, eh? Why? Their vision of hell appalled me. Oh, so you galloped away. But like many another lapsed Catholic, you spent the rest of your life trying to fill that black hole. And now you think you found it. Ghosts for angels. Ectoplasm for faith. The world of spirits. Yes. And you believe in it? Completely. And in everything you've seen tonight? I have no doubt. <sighs> oh, you see what you want to see, Doyle, as you have done so many times before. But let me show you. Let me show you what lies behind the truth this time. Let me show you what lies behind the world of spirits. See? trick of the light. I'll throw in a few not so well-known facts about the early life of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The curtain rises. The play begins. It all depends on the willingness to believe. Play on the willingness to believe. And there you have it. Now you see it. Now you don't. Now you see it, now you do. Witness. Always bring the witness. Always. But you begged me to come alone. I should have known better. Why have you done this, eh? For what earthly reason? To show you, to show you what you abandoned me for. This, a box of tricks. Oh, my dear man, I have been present at hundreds of seances where the spirits were indisputably in attendance. You would have said the same about tonight. Huh? Stella, the teacups. Who are you? What gives you the right? Holmes. I am Holmes. Don't you see? You put that in place of this. You try to hide things, Doyle, down deep. Down deep where the monsters lie. But I am your reality. I am Sherlock Holmes. I regret I do not recognize you. You have insulted me. Made me look a damn fool. How dare you? You must not turn your back on creation. I shall never write another word on Holmes. Not one. You stole your stories from me. From my life. And now it is empty you abandoned me. Please. Please don't. If no more tales or adventures, then at least acknowledge me. Your child. Your creation. Your reality. Give me your blessing. Please. That I'm afraid I cannot give. The only person you have deluded tonight is yourself. Holmes does not exist. You, I do not know. But whoever you are, I pity you. And now, good night. Aha! Not quite such a dignified exit as hoped for, Doyle. But do you remember? Arthur, Arthur, named after the King of England, no doubt. Enter, Sir Arthur. Your fate attends you. The master of disguise, eh? Don't waste your energy, Doyle. You may need it. Here is the key. Give it to me. First, your blessing. Go to hell. Two full of Jesuits. Give me that key or I'll tear it from you. No. I have a better idea. You can fight me for it. I know you were once a fair swordsman. A time ago. A naked blade. You're oh, mad. Not quite cricket, eh? To the death, Doyle. To the death. Excellent! The risk still holds true, but for how long? You see, you are tied to the wheel of time, but I, I am immortal. Ah, you'll see about that. I fled him down the nights and down the days, the archers of the year, the labyrinth in ways of my own mind. I hit him from those strong feet that followed, followed after the hound of heaven, hound of the Baskervilles. <gasps> I am your child, your creation. You are nothing. Acknowledge me. Never. Your blessing. Do your damnedest. And so be it. He'll be all right. 
A good cross hit to the jaw. Never hurt anyone. Good Lord. There's nothing real. Well, my lady, I hope you are proud of your part in all this. No, not proud, but I have reason. Please, enlighten me. My father did this. He was possessed of an uncontrollable temper, next to madness. He had a sword stick, that very one. He used to draw the blade and cut it through the air. One day he chose me instead. It would have been my death, except for my brother here. He saved my life, but in so doing was forced to kill with his bare hands to kill his own father. My God. The Beresford case. Yes, Major Beresford, ex-Indian Army. Of course, my brother was acquitted. But since then, the strain, the terrible guilt of what he had to do has taken its toll. We're isolated here. I cannot stand people looking at me, staring like monkeys. It is not the end of your world. I wonder if you would bear it. My poor brother. Part of his mental torment, I'm sure, is that he fears he may have inherited his father's madness. I've often come upon him standing with his hands outstretched staring at them, as if he felt that they had somehow betrayed him. His obsession with Holmes, why? He read every scrap in the papers, their own reminiscences, every story, every tale. He became the man. Yes, but why? There must be a reason, a motive. Prove every fact, and only reason from proved facts. Well, that's not going to do much good here, is it, eh? No, no good at all. Now, what we need here is a bit of imagination. So, Sherlock, but why? Hmm? Your brother ever talk about fate? Yes, often. Did he now? Yes, we'd all like to know about fate. But it's a dark path. His especially. Precisely. And who better to walk that road, to follow the twisted lines, to investigate? Well, that has to be it, don't you see? I cannot. Oh, but you can. Holmes, a pure intellect. Able to stand before the horrors. Guilt. The dread of fate. The inheritance of the father. Madness. Able to stand before it and merely make deduction. Holmes became his shield. Put your shoulder to the door. Keep it out. Keep it out. When I was a little boy, the very first story I ever wrote was about a man eaten alive by a tiger. So, mystery solved. But what did he want from me, I wonder? A father's blessing. A recognition. That will be falsehood upon falsehood. Not my style, I'm afraid. Please, Mr. Doyle. Please. No, no, no. Come, sit down. Sit down. This whole charade must have been very distasteful to you. It's worse. Much worse than you realize. You see, Mr. Doyle, I myself, I believe in the world of spirits. You do? Yes. To help you, I betrayed something very precious to me. I've always known that I had psychic abilities, but always denied them. And now, betrayed. All night long, I felt something pressing on me. Someone pressing to gain entrance to me, through me. Oh, now. Oh, oh my hands, please. This won't do at all, you know. Once bitten. Please believe me. Not possible. 
Then don't. Disbelieve. Open. Open your mind. Open your mind. This enough for a man of your age, Arthur Cohen. Uh, that's a strong grip you have there. When you were a wee boy, such a black boy, you would hold on to my hand and lead me along the trenches. You would turn and say to me, just between the two of us, my dear, when you are old man, you should have a velvet dress and go with us and sit in comfort by the fire. <laughs> we didn't have a brass farthing then. But later on, we kept your word. I wanted for nothing. You're a good boy. It cannot be, can it? Of course it can. Never had much time for all that spirit stuff, mind you. You used to scold me for it. Yes, here I am. Must hurry. Poor girl, not strong enough. Mm. That poor, wretched man. You must help him, Arthur. I am not telling Taradiru. Let go my hands. Now you, my blockhead of the sun, listen. What did we always say? The duty we owe to the weak overrides all other duties. And is superior to all circumstances. Chivalry. Victory with honor. Now, other times, places. Arise, Sir Sherlock Holmes. My child. My creation. My reality. And now? My equal. Not equal, Doyle, not equal. You, alas, will never reach the heights of intelligence so natural to me. But I thank you for the honor and recognition. Very decent of you. Well, I bid you both good night. Doyle, where are you going? Supper. Hungry. You acknowledge me, then you leave me? Oh, you have your life. I have mine. Yours, mine the same. I think not. What life? <laughs> You've stolen my life. You must stay. Restoration. Not possible, I'm afraid. You must plot your own course now. Oh, while you spin round spirits and dance like a puppet in a world of make-believe and nonsense. It is a real world. Oh, I know, you fooled me tonight, but that world is as real as you or I. Then prove it to me. Prove your belief. I do not believe or think. I know. I have sat in a seance, surrounded by witnesses. No trickery possible. All seeing what I saw. The spirit made flesh. I have heard the sound of a vanished voice. I have felt the touch of a vanished hand. I cannot accept that. I am the rational process. There's more to this world than mere rationality. There is mystery. I solve mysteries, Doyle. Ah, this one may be beyond you. Spirit made flesh. Not possible. 
When Jesus resurrected, he was spirit made flesh, was he not? These beings from the psychic world may be like amphibia, capable of passing from one world to another, land to sea, sea to land. Like tortoises? Yes, if you like. Who can believe in all of this? Hundreds of thousands, soon millions will. It was after the horrors of that world war. I realized that the people needed to know. Parents, in their anguish and their grief, needed to know that all these brave soldiers who were gone had not vanished forever. They could touch them, feel them, talk to them. A bridge between life and death. All kicked off by the war, eh? What do you know about it, Doll? You never fought in any war. I lost my son in the war. My boy, Kingsley. Fine boy. Man, I suppose. Young, like so many of them. Then months later, at a seance, he appeared to me. I saw him whole, spoke with him. He kissed me on the brow. But your father, too, he, they never appeared, did they? No. No. We reach, we grasp, and what is left at the end? A shadow. Beyond the shadows, there is love and forgiveness, a world where the dead live. Nothing. Empty. Filled. I have seen, heard, and touched that world. Deluded. No. My son kissed me. Why did we argue? We will both know soon enough. No, I cannot cross that bridge. I'll be waiting for you on the other side. Please. Don't go. Don't leave. Don't take him from me. I am... I need... Holmes! Keep up the tigers, eh? He will. Never fear. Always. Sherlock, I leave him in your hands. Take good care. I may need him again someday. No need for it here. By all means, my dear fellow. There's danger always afoot. These dark nights are treacherous. Yes, for strangers to travel. Goodbye, Doyle. Goodbye, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, by the way, give my regards to Watson, will you? That's a good chap. Regards to Watson. That nipped him in the bud. Good Lord. H O L M S. I don't know he get the last word. He always does. But, what a story for the brandy. On July the 7th, 1930, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle died. After his death, a medium received the following message from him. There is no hell except what a man makes for himself. No eternal punishment in fire as churches, especially the Roman, threaten. Later, as I gain strength, I shall have much to say about conditions here and surroundings.